this guide, we'll explore the use of Capture One's styles and presets functionality as a way of simplifying and speeding up your workflow. Now, a lot of you will be aware that Capture One has supported styles for many versions now, and you can buy styles from different photographers and different designers and apply them to your images. When you do that, you'll find them built into this built-in styles section. And in this case, we've got a pack in here called Spring. And in this area here is the most important part. So let's go to the Adjustments tab up here, which is the clipboard with the checkbox. And within here, you're going to find all of the styles that you have available to you on your system. As you move your mouse up and down, it's going to give you a preview of that style. And if I click on it, for instance, Spring 02 or Spring 04, or maybe both, or I maybe go into Landscape Color 1, you can see at the top I'm building a set of styles. Some of them are going to say they're overridden, and that's because this particular style overrides some of the detail that's in this style. And likewise, this one was overriding the one below. And this is because we're stacking the styles. If I only want to apply one style at a time, I can click on the three dots, take the tick out of stack styles, and I can choose just one style as I go. So that's great if I want to apply a style that someone else has produced onto my picture. But what if I want to apply my own styles and create my own styles that I can use in future? Well, that's where user styles comes in, and that's where we're going to go to in a second. But before we go into those styles, and let me just clear that spring style down, I'm going to cover something else, which is presets. Because while a lot of noise is made about styles and the fact that it's a collection of adjustments that can apply a certain look to your image, we don't often talk about presets, but actually they can be equally powerful. So built-in presets, let's expand that little menu. And we can see in there, there's a black and white, there's a color balance, color editor, curve, exposure, film grain, and so on. These match the names of the tools on the other tabs, if you have a look. So we've got a color balance one in here, for example. And if I move my mouse over each of these, just like with styles, as I move my mouse over the presets, you're going to see the image change to match that preset. So in this case, velvety warm versus warm green. Just like with styles, I can stack them. So I can say, well, we want turquoise and velvety warm and warm green, and I can add a style over the top. So let's add in the landscape color as well. Now it's going to tell me which ones are presets and which ones are styles. So the little brush denotes a style, the three um, lines like a hamburger denote a preset. But each of these things is building up layer upon layer effectively of styles and presets to a particular look. Let's just reset that. So let's go back into our presets. This color balance one here, bright gold, cool or cold orange, cool look, and so on, purple punch, turquoise shading, velvety warm. Now, where have we seen that before? If I go onto my color tab and go down to color balance and click on that same little three hamburger, you're going to find bright gold, cold orange, cool look, purple punch, turquoise shading, velvety warm. And that's because these presets that are on the adjustments tab match the presets, and they are the presets that are available to you in each individual tool. And that's the big difference between a preset and a style. A preset only controls one particular tool. A style can control several tools and several different adjustments within one particular layer. So in this case, I've got the ability to use a preset on an individual tool, or I have the ability to apply a style to either the background image by just clicking on it or right click and saying apply to background, or I could create a new layer of it, apply to new layer, let's click on that, let's go back to my image and it's created a new layer, in this case Spring 03. This allows me then to apply a different opacity to it if I want. So with all of that functionality, that would be great if I could apply it to my own styles and presets. And the good news is you absolutely can. And this is where the time saving comes in because we've got these two little ones here that no one really pays attention to, user presets and user styles. And there's a little bit of a giveaway there under one of them. So let's go into our preset. And I'm just going to um, start, I've got, for example, here a uh, two layers in here, teal and orange, um, just to quickly explain what these two layers do. It creates that sort of Instagram-y look of a teal and orange washed out version of uh, an image by changing the opacity on each of these different layers, I can control how much teal and orange the image looks. So there's our base image, and there's the image with the effect. That effect is done within the color editor under the skin tone tab. So my orange uh, layer is basically choosing an orange hue and telling the skin tone editor, it doesn't have to apply only to skin, but it's telling it to make anything in this rainbow side, so anything from green through to red through to magenta, 
make it uniform and make it orange. Likewise in the teal layer, if I look at here, it's got a little blue or a turquoisey teal area. And we are telling it because of this uniformity slider here saying a hue 100% and saturation 50, make anything on this side of the wheel basically become teal. So we've got one layer that makes everything turn orange if it's on the right hand side of the wheel and one layer that makes everything turn teal if it's on the left hand side of the wheel. And then by using the opacity slider on each of those different layers, we control the overlay and we get this effect. But to create that skin tone map, if I wanted to do that on every single image, I'd go crazy. So I don't have to. With my color editor on teal, I can click on the three hamburgers and go to save user preset. And I can tell it that I want to take the skin tone. I could take the basic and advanced as well, but I know that I've only edited the skin tone and go to save. And I can call this one Paul Teal. And then I can go to my orange layer. Or if I hadn't actually created another layer, I could just do it straight from the tool. But let's go to our three little lines, save user preset. And again, it's only the skin tone I'm worried about, save. And we'll call this one Paul Orange. So what that means now is rather than having to recreate all of those settings in the color editor, I could go to another image, this one, for example. I could create a new filled adjustment layer. And I could say, let's just apply Paul Orange. Let's call that one Orange. Oops, let's spell Orange right. And let's create a new filled adjustment layer. And we'll call, well, we'll put the teal apply on it first. And we'll call this one teal. Okay, so now these are both, remember, at 100%. We need to lower them down a little bit just to get the effect right. But now I've got in just a couple of clicks the exact same settings in my skin tone tool for orange and teal on two different layers on a different image. But it means that I've got some consistency across the two um, pictures. So that's saving a preset in my color editor. And if I now go into the adjustments tab back up here, the checkbox in the uh, clipboard and go to my user presets, we'll find under color editor, we've got our new presets in there. So I can now go to a completely different image and hover over it and it'll show me what would happen to the orange layer and what would happen to the teal layer. So with that saved, you can imagine now I could go into any individual tool. So if I've, if I've got a particularly difficult curve that I want to keep replicating with a very high contrast, I can just click on those three lines and say save user preset and call it whatever I want and it's saved in my user presets area here. What that means is I can then come back to this image at any point and I can apply it as if I was in the other image on its own because these presets go across the board, across any of your different catalogs or sessions or anything like that. They're uniform. They're related to your Capture One install, not related to a catalog or an image. This can build pretty quickly, um, but we're now going to go into the styles part because the styles is where it gets really, really powerful. Uh, before uh, in another video, we actually covered something called the dust spot finder. So let's load it into this uh, image here. So I've edited this image. It's got some repair layers. You could see that flashing thing down here is actually uh, because we've got a tree that's been removed in the healing brush. We've got a couple of layers to create some uh, contrast. But what I want to do now is create a dust spot finder layer. So let's create a filled layer and increase our contrast all the way, our brightness down a little bit, saturation down a bit. Uh, let's put our highlights all the way down, shadows all the way up, and we're going to pull our clarity and structure up too. Now I can see here, because of my little dust spot layer, we've got a dust spot there and a dust spot there that we can now heal out on a different layer. But if I wanted to save myself the task of doing that every time, let me just delete that layer. I'm going to create a new layer, filled adjustment layer, and I'm going to right click and say apply adjustments from user styles, dust spot finder. And the reason that that sat there is because I saved it as a style. And I don't even have to do that. I don't even have to go to the, uh, the effort of creating an adjustment layer. If I delete that layer, let's go to my adjustments tab here. Under user styles, we'll find my dust spot finder. Right click, I can choose to apply it to background. Please don't do that. <laughs> I can apply it to the selected layer. Again, please be careful with that. But more importantly, apply to a new layer. So apply the dust spot finder to a new layer. I go into here and you'll find it's actually called it dust spot finder because that was the name of the style. So 
if I created a completely different layer, let's say, um, let's imagine we have a new adjustment layer. Let me just get rid of the dust spot one because it's going a bit crazy. And on this particular adjustment layer, we're going to call it crazy saturation. So with this layer, we're going to, as you can imagine, create a huge amount of saturation, probably a lot of contrast. We'll do a little bit of HDRing just to make it look horrible. And we'll do a little bit of curve work just to really pop that contrast even more. Uh, not too much, my eyes are starting to bleed. Okay, so we've got crazy saturation. If I now want to apply that to another image, well, that's kind of difficult unless I save a style. So let's right click, save adjustments as a style. I've got to choose, just like with the preset, which parts of the tools that I've used I want to copy across. Now I could copy across everything, but in this case I know that it's basically the exposure tab that I've used and also the curve. No point in copying the other stuff across. I haven't done any color editing on it. I haven't done any lens correction, so we're going to copy these things across. Save. I give it a name. We'll call it Crazy Saturation. It can be whatever you like. And hit save. With that layer, I can now actually delete it. Just delete that layer completely. I'm going to delete the dust spot finder too. But if I now go into my little clipboard area, under user styles, we'll find crazy saturation. Right click, apply to a new layer, and there it is sat there. But here's the advantage of a style, because within one image, I could, for example, I can do mouse copying and so on. And within one catalog, I could apply, so I could effectively adjustments, copy adjustments, and I could apply those adjustments to all the other images. But if I've got several catalogs or several sessions over many, many years, I'm not going to keep going back to one particular catalog to copy those adjustments and so on. That's going to be crazy. Instead, if I save them as a style, it means that I can now, for example, go into this image. This is San Francisco at night. Go to my adjustments tab. Crazy saturation will give me a preview of it. Right click, apply to a new layer. That means that this image has now got my teal and orange layer, but also that crazy saturation on top. If I want to find the dust spots in this layer, because I saved the dust spot finder, right click, apply to new layer. I get a new layer called dust spot finder, 100% opacity, and look at all those dust spots I've now got to fix. Remember, don't do the fixing on the finder layer, do the fixing on the removal layer. But you see the point, the point being, once I've created a set of adjustments through different tools and different presets effectively that I want to replicate into different images, all I've got to do is save them as a style. And to do that, I choose the adjustment layer that I've created, right click, save adjustments as a style, choose which of the different tools I want to copy across into that style and hit save. Once I do that, you're going to find they appear in here under styles and presets under your user styles. If you've got an individual tool that you want to copy the adjustments that you keep making to that one particular tool, just like my teal and orange ones here, for example, then just go into the individual tool that you've edited at any point. So we can even do it with something really simple like white balance. So let's go to our white balance and say we want to make it 5500 zero tint. That's daylight. Click on the little three lines as a hamburger, save user preset, save the white balance. There's only one option in this one, and we're going to call it daylight. What that means is I can now go onto any of my images, even the one with crazy saturation here. Let's create a new filled layer. And in my white balance tool, I can now go onto my little three lines and hit daylight. And it instantly changes my white balance to 5500. Now, in reality, it's just as quick to type in 5500 if you wanted to do that, or even use the drop down and just go to daylight, um, depending on where, where your daylight point is. But effectively, you can do this with any of the tools. You can save any of the settings that you've made as a preset. And any of those presets, you can then build up to create an adjustment layer, which you can then save as a style. So presets are an individual tool. A style is a collection of different tools as an adjustment layer. You can apply that adjustment layer in or that style to an adjustment layer in two ways. You can do it from the layers panel. I can right click and say apply adjustments from my user style and choose what one I've saved. Or I can go into the adjustments tab and just apply the user style here. And if I click on it, it's going to apply to the background if it's selected. If I right click on it, I can choose not just the background, but I can choose selected layer or a new layer 
and build up an entire recipe of all my own styles that save me time, save me effort, and just keep everything consistent.